thank you so much. Um, I'm a bit under the weather, and so uh, uh, I'm not going to speak long, but as I've heard the extraordinary speeches so far, I think a, a short speech is appropriate because this is not a time for words. This is a time for action, and uh, that's the path that I, I'm confident we are on. I, I want to start off by thanking three really good friends uh, who have improbably uh, joined together to lead this conference. Um, first of all, my friend, Sheikh Ashraf Jabari, um, someone who I've gotten to know well uh, over, the last, uh, over the last year or so, uh, a man of courage, vision, uh, practical, uh, but, but committed uh, to his people, uh, to peace, to coexistence. To, we couldn't ask for uh, a better partner in this uh, effort, and we're deeply we're grateful, Ashraf. And I'm, I'm proud to call you my friend. Um, Avi Zimmerman, from, uh, an Israeli citizen from the town of Ariel, who you just heard from. And of course, uh, the third leg of the stool, good old girl from Alabama, <laughs> Heather Johnston, I guess now of California, but we won't hold that against you. Um, uh, Ashraf uh, has uh, been kind enough, along with uh, many of your colleagues, have been uh, kind enough to uh, invite me to their homes. Um, I haven't taken them up on it yet, but, I'm, but I will very soon. Um, I, I, you can probably tell from, uh, just from looking at me, I'm not a stranger to good food. And um, I'm looking forward. Uh, let's get the, uh, now you know I keep kosher. So uh, we'll have to work around that, but you know, I hear the hummus is fantastic. Tuchina, chatzilim, tazmina tivani, avo b'simcha. And I look forward to that. Uh, one day, um, I believe, in the near future, as we begin to see Israelis and Palestinians working together, studying together, investing together, and living together in real peace, not the peace that uh, comes from a piece of paper, uh, but the real peace that's in the heart and the soul of everyone who's here. We will look back on days like today to understand how it all began. I want to thank Senator James Lankford for being here uh, from the great state of Oklahoma, for traveling a very long distance to be here with us at a time. I know the Congress is not in session this week. You could have uh, instead uh, taken some time, well-deserved time, with your family. Uh, we know how much of a commitment it is for you to make the trip. It's a very long trip. Uh, Senator Langford is one of Israel's best friends in Washington. And uh, equally important, he has been a constant source of creative and thoughtful ideas to improve the lives of everyone in the region. Senator, your presence here today lends invaluable credibility, credence to the courageous efforts of all who are in attendance. We're deeply grateful that you made the trip. <laughs> to all my Palestinian friends who are here, I got to renew some, uh, some acquaintances uh, before we got started. To all the Palestinian friends who are here, uh, who may be listening, who may uh, watch this video in the future, uh, the United States is with you. The people of the United States are with you. The President of the United States is with you. And to my Israeli friends, uh, I say the same. We are all with you. We are with all of you together to support you in new, out-of-the-box thinking to create a better, a safer, a more prosperous world for Israelis and Palestinians alike. No one, no one can or should tell you what is possible. No one can or should limit your dreams or scuttle your aspirations. What you seek is right, it is just, it is moral, a better life for all of your people. As the children of Abraham, there is far more that unites us than divides us. We are not destined to fight. It is not our legacy to quarrel. 
Every one of us believes in the essential dignity and holiness of every human being, and it is our sacred task to bring that holiness and dignity to our everyday life. We know that with the differences that Isaac and Ishmael had in the Bible, uh, they had a great reconciliation uh, before their father Abraham died, and we know how they jointly uh, buried their father Abraham. They reconcile their differences. Obviously, we can do, and we should do, no less. Our foundations are in the Old Testament. I want to read to you a single verse from the book of Exodus that I think sums up what God commands from every one of us. It's something I've read many times and, and, and really hadn't focused on until recently. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 5, I'll, I'll say it in English, God commands, if you come across your enemy standing alongside his donkey that has fallen under the weight of its load, do not leave him until the load is lifted, the animal is righted, and the master and the animal are sent on their way. What is God telling us here? Is he saying we should be kind to animals? Perhaps, perhaps that's part of the message, although we, we've certainly learned that lesson elsewhere in the Bible as well. I think God is saying something far more profound. God is speaking not about a donkey, He's speaking about the donkey of your enemy. His message is groundbreaking. God is saying, you have enemies, that's fine. You have what appear to be irreconcilable differences with your enemies, political difference with your enemies, that's fine. Those things happen. But never, never let those differences come to destroy your humanity. Never let those differences cause you to stand and watch as your enemy fails to achieve basic human dignity and opportunity. I commend this verse to the Palestinian leadership. It is no secret that we have long attempted to infuse opportunity and investment and into Judea and Samaria for the benefit of all of its residents. And the leadership has responded time and time again that as long as there is no political solution, as long as we are enemies, if you will, there will be no lightening of the load. There will be no acceptance of opportunity, no recognition of human dignity. With due respect to my friends in the Palestinian leadership, it's a mistake. It's a grave mistake. No one is seeking to do an end around political solutions. Political solutions are important. This is not a substitute for a political resolution. But the political process is extraordinarily complex. Smarter people than me have tried and failed over the past 50 years to hold the Palestinian people hostage to a political solution when humanitarian business efforts are right in front of us is a grave mistake and it's a great disservice to the Palestinian people. You all recall the Oslo Accords of 1993. The Oslo Accords were signed the next year. There was an increase in terrorism fourfold. Why? Because pieces of paper do not create peace. Relationships make peace. Investments make peace. Friendships make peace. That's the peace that will hold. That's the kind of peace that is enduring. Doesn't mean you give up on the politics. The pol political process will continue. Look, we, we, we're, we're hopeful that we make real progress on the political front, real progress in the near future. But that is never a substitute to delay the opportunity to provide for the Jews and the Palestinians in Judea and Samaria who are entitled to the very same things that we all want for our families, for our children, for the people we love. We have to move forward, and that's what this conference is all about. The Palestinian people deserve better. And so we turn to all of you now. Perhaps this is the broadest cross-section 
of Palestinian business leaders ever to sit down together under the sponsorship of Americans and Israelis, and we say to all of you, enough. Enough, enough of the endless political bickering that has brought nothing but misery. Let us work together for all of our people. Let us make real peace with each other. Let us do God's will to advance the dignity of every human life. Thank you so much for being here. May God bless and protect each and every one of you. Thank you so much.